to Solar Power World Solar Speaks Live, powered by Unirac at Solar Power International 2015 in Anaheim, California. So I'm Kathy Zip, and today I'm very excited to be speaking with Julia Hamm, CEO of SEPA. So thank you so much for being here, Julia. Oh, thanks for having We're me. Take care of that. <laughs> Sound a little bit. Okay. So I think a good place to start um, is talking about the uh, SIA and SEPA being two very important organizations for our industry. But can you give us a little more light in um, how they operate differently or their different missions and other different Sure, sure. yeah. So I think as, as most people know, SIA, of course, is the trade association for the solar industry. They represent the interests of the industry largely on policy um, and advocacy and lobbying efforts, both federally and at the state level. Uh, SEPA has a very different mission and scope. We've, we've been around since 1992, really focused on helping the utility industry incorporate more solar into the, uh, their energy portfolio, regardless of whether that's utility-owned, customer-owned, uh, utility-scale, distributed rooftop solar, it's all relevant to our mission. Sure. But we work very hard to bring utilities along to uh, really foster the growth of solar in the U.S. Right. And so we do that through uh, a model where we're focused on education and research and collaborative, cre really creating a safe collaborative platform where our utility members and our solar industry members can come together and talk about issues that are honestly, you know, sometimes quite challenging. Right. And in order for us to be successful in doing that, our members have to completely trust us. And an important part of that is that we do not get involved in lobbying and advocacy efforts. Uh, because again, that would really uh, harm our ability to be able to effective, be effective at what we do so well. Sure. Well, you do do a very um, awesome job, and it's a very important Thank job um, to translate. You know, the, what um, how utilities can't be successful with solar power. So um, let's have a, a little bit more fun here and, and talk about your background. I always like to hear how people got into solar. Um, so can you talk about how you got to where you are now and why you're so passionate about solar? Sure. Well, I sort of ended up here by act, not by accident, but not necessarily by design either. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, when I was in college, I was a business management and marketing major. And uh, my first job out of college was actually doing meeting planning. And uh, That's good was, background to have. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it was. It was a yeah. great background. But I also uh, didn't feel challenged by it. Uh -huh. And so a year out of college, I answered, I'm dating myself by saying this, but it was back before online job ads. So I answered an ad in the newspaper, and it literally was about that big. Uh -huh. And all it really said was that it was looking for an entry-level marketing position, your person. And so I applied to the ad having no idea what industry it was in or what company it was for. Uh, and it was actually working for the company that at the time managed SEPA. So, um, you know, I got that job and SEPA was my primary client for a number of years and I did a lot, played a lot of different roles, member relations, board liaison, marketing, event planning, and then um, I actually left for a couple of years to go do some energy efficiency consulting and really enjoyed that. It was great to get my hands into some other energy issues and then came back in January of 2004 to run SEPA and, and have grown it since then. So. Uh, almost my entire career, with the exception of my first year in college, has been in the energy space. And, you know, I didn't, again, I didn't end up here by design, but I certainly can't imagine ever working in any other industry outside the energy industry because I, am, I have grown to be very passionate about it. Right. That's, that's really cool. I didn't know that you kind of worked on the outskirts of uh, your position before yeah. you got yeah. to it. So. <laughs> well, that's good and bad. I think the people that work for me, you know, I, I've done almost every job, so sometimes <laughs> that can drive them crazy. Right. <laughs> well, you know, you know what you're talking about. So. Um, so now you have been president and CEO of SEPA for over 10 years, so congratulations. That's a wonderful accomplishment. Um, so what are your thoughts as you look back to the industry um, now from when you started? Because I, you know, the industry has obviously changed a lot over the last decade. So, do you feel we've come as far as you hoped in the beginning, or less, or what were some things that maybe surprised you? What What are your thoughts on those last ten years? Yeah, well, I would go back even further because I, you know, I got into the industry initially before right. I was CEO in '99. Okay. Uh, so you know, since that time, certainly when I got in in '99, solar was very much still in almost an R and D phase in the U.S. There, there were very few grid-connected PV systems in the country. 
And, you know, I think the things, you know, no surprise, but the things that have changed obviously are simply around the price. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've always, with SEPA's utility membership, are, you know, utilities have always said, um, you know, that they're tech, they are technology agnostic and once solar technology, once they could get solar at a price that was competitive with other resources, they would, you know, really be looking to, to move into that space. And I think that's, so that's one of the big changes, obviously, we've seen now. How do you see conversations about solar going uh, with utilities uh, evolving next year and beyond? Yeah. Well, again, as it was mentioned on the panel this morning by all three panelists, I think in the past couple of years, the utility mindset around solar has, has very much changed. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think almost all utility executives in, the, in this country now realize that solar is going to be a significant part of the country's energy future. And I'm not sure that they all believed that just a couple of years ago. So it, it really changes the dynamic now. And so now it's about finding ways to make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's about making the changes to the utility business model, utility rate structures that ensure that solar can be an important part of the energy future and that they're providing their customers with what they're asking for. Yeah. Uh, and again, it goes also ties back into the customer cent the shift to this customer centric perspective mm -hmm. because you know, utilities have gone through this change of you know, they, they used to call their customers rate payers. And they, you know, they don't use that terminology anymore. Now they are their customers. They're right. looking to provide their customers with what they want. That says a lot with so, the, how, how the view has changed. Yeah, so. yeah. So I think in the, the next couple of years, you know, community solar is a huge topic now. Right. Uh, it is the number one thing. We have more than 550 utility members at this point. It is the number one thing our utility members call and ask for our help on. Uh, which and you know we really are supportive of community solar because we think it provides uh, the all the great thing you know many of the great things about utility scale solar and many of the great things about rooftop solar yeah. combined uh, and really is is a valuable option for, and, and makes solar an option for so many customers that you know for whatever reason can't have solar on their own roof yeah so community solar is going to be a big part of it. I think another big topic, I mentioned it earlier, but is this more holistic thinking around technologies. Um, has, utilities historically um, have, have been pretty siloed from a program's perspective. So they will have a, you know, they'll have a solar program, they may have a thermostat program, they may have an EV program, mm -hmm. and they offer those programs independently to customers. And you know, we really think we're going to see in the next couple of years utilities again to think that will begin to think more holistically um, and and move away from siloing those things and saying to the customers, what is it that you need or want? Oh, okay, that's what you want. Well, then let us couple these three things together for you, and that's going to get you what you want. Uh, so I think that's going to be a major shift. It, it's not going to honestly, it's not going to be easy because yeah. it really changes. It changes the or the org chart of a utility. It changes. Uh, you know, the way it just, it's very different from how they have historically operated, but um, I think there's a real common understanding now that that's the direction that they have to they have to head in order to, again, to be responsive to what their customers actually want from them. Right, absolutely. It's definitely a, a way that we have to move to be successful, so. Yeah. Well, I think that wraps up this edition of Solar Speaks Live. It's all we have time for at Solar Power International. Um, but Julie, I do want to thank you again for being with us. It was wonderful to hear your insights, so thank you so much. Thanks, Kathy. Um, and be sure to stop by throughout the show. There are more interviews with solar experts, so thank you so much, and thanks for listening.